able to welcome back to my channel. Today is December 1st, which means that it's the first day of Vlogmas. Yes, I'm going to try that again. Last year, I tried Vlogmas. I failed. I failed miserably. My intention is to vlog or make a video every day in December, or at least up until December 24th, I think. I'd like to do a video every day in December. That is my plan. That is my goal. I'm announcing it publicly. If I fail, it will be embarrassing, so I won't fail. So, today being December 1st, my first video is a library haul because I stopped by the library this afternoon and I picked up some books, like I always do. I'm going to share with you the books that I checked out today, and you're going to tell me which one of them I should read first. A couple of the books that I chose, well... I picked them up. They were reserves. I picked them up because I've already started reading the series. I'm not a big series reader, which you probably know, but I've been doing a buddy read of the Elena Ferrante Neapolitan novels. I've been doing this buddy read now for a few weeks, and so far we've read the first two books. There are four books in the series, so I picked those up. So far we've read My Brilliant Friend and The Story of a New Name. Book three is Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay. That's book three. And book four is The Story of the Lost Child. And those came on my reserves, so I went to pick those up this afternoon. And so you don't need to vote on those because that's a given that I'm going to be reading those in December. But here are the other books that I picked up. So here are the fiction reads. First is The Heart of Henry Quantum by Pepper Harding. And the synopsis says, He wondered if people leave a trace of themselves when they rest somewhere, not in the way of perfume or body odor, but in the way of essence of soul. This brought to mind a little carved soapstone someone had once given him from India, a tiny little frog crudely carved. And when Henry held it in his own hands, he got the uncanny sensation he was touching not the frog, but all the people who had ever rubbed it for good luck, even down to the fellow who first carved it, and that they had left traces of themselves just as he was leaving something of himself. Dot, dot, dot. So I really want to read this one. I just saw it and I hope it is as good as the synopsis sounds. It's a Christmas read. He, Henry Quantum has several thoughts going through his head at any given time, so it's no surprise when he forgets something very important, specifically a Christmas gift for his wife, which he realizes on the morning of December 23rd. So that's a Christmas read. So that is quite in line with where we are right now. I need to probably read that pretty soon. Another fiction read is Zama by Antonio Di Benedetto. This one was translated by Esther Allen, and I don't know anything about the story, so let's see what the synopsis says. It says, Zama takes place in the last decade of the 18th century and describes the solitary suspended existence of Don Diego de Zama, a highly placed servant of the Spanish crown who has been posted to Asuncion in remote Paraguay. I've never read anything that was set in Paraguay before, so that should be a pretty interesting read, at least from that perspective. And it's less than 200 pages, 198 to be exact. So that is on my list. Other fiction reads, Dave Eggers' How We Are Hungry. This is a short story collection, but I fell in love with the cover art. So it kind of doesn't matter what's inside, I just love the cover. This is a book that I would buy just for the cover itself, but I've never seen it before. This is also a little over 200 pages. And Dave Eggers is the author of the heartbreaking work of Staggering Genius, which is also on my TBR. So I'd like to read this as a companion to just kind of get into his work a little bit more. He's also the author of The Circle, which is also on my TBR. I should have read this already. I still haven't. Okay, I should probably read these together. Tell me what you think. Then I have some nonfiction. Patty Smith's Devotion, which is maybe subtitled. There's a little addendum right here, which says why I write. So this is probably Patty Smith talking about her desire to write, to being like devotion. She says, why is one compelled to write? To set oneself apart, cocooned, wrapped in solitude, despite the want of others. Virginia Woolf had her room. Proust, his shuttered windows. Marguerite Dura, her muted house. Dylan Thomas, his modest shed. All seeking an emptiness to imbue with words. The words that will penetrate virgin territory. Crack on claimed combinations. Articulate the infinite. Devotion. 
this is pretty small this is less than a hundred pages I'll probably read it right now <laughs> other nonfiction reads yes nonfiction November clearly wasn't enough for me I picked up Stephen Greenblatt's Pulitzer Prize winning book The Swerve How the World Became Modern I love everything about this cover especially that little gold embossed circle that says winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Yes, I can't help it. I just love prize-winning books. This one's a little longer. This is over 300 pages, but it says, in the winter of 1417, an unemployed papal secretary turned book hunter named Poggio Bracciolini discovered a copy of Luc Lucretius's On the Nature of Things in a Remote Monastery. The story of how this astonishing poem would cause the world to swerve in a new direction is at once a supreme work of scholarship, a literary page turner, and a thrilling testament to the power of the written word. It has illustrations. I can't wait to read this. I read Stephen Greenblatt's The Rise and Fall of Adam and Eve during Nonfiction November. I'll tell you more about that when I do my Nonfiction November wrap up or when I just do my regular November Reads video, but for now, I'm planning to read that one. And the last nonfiction book that I have is another Pulitzer Prize winner, The Origins of Creativity by Edward O. Wilson. This circle right here is, you won't be able to see it. It's a man crouched entering this circle of light, and it's kind of superimposed on a picture of someone's mind so I'm not sure anyway what does this say reflecting on the deepest origins of language storytelling and art Wilson demonstrates how creativity began not 10,000 years ago as we have long assumed but over 100,000 years ago in the Paleolithic age Chronicling this evolution of creativity from primate ancestors to humans, the origins of creativity shows how the humanities, spurred on by the invention of language, have played a largely unexamined role in defining our species. And in doing so, Wilson explores what we can learn about human nature from a surprising range of creative expressions. The instinct to create gardens, the use of metaphors and irony in speech, and the power of music and song. So these are all in my wheelhouse. These are all on my radar. These are all books that I love. I pick them up because I love them. I pick them up because I'm interested in them. Whether you vote or not, I'm probably going to read all of these anyway. But if you've read any of these books, let me know in the comments which one you've read, what you thought about it. Lillian Newsender, I think, told me that she read The Swerve before. Um, and so I'm sure there are others of you on here who've probably read these books. They said this book is from 1956. Um, I might be the only person on booktube who hasn't read it so go ahead and leave me a comment down below about that one if you've seen this being reviewed someplace and you want to share a thought about it i think this is going to be pretty interesting i love books that have suggestions of science in them quantum so that's it for now that's my library book haul thanks for watching leave me a comment down below and we'll chat down there so until next time happy reading bye